Occasionally when researching a video project, we'll end up with extra bits of footage that may not be directly related to the subject at hand, and this is one of those instances. This footage provides a quick look at several U.S. Air Force projects of the late 40s and early 50s. This is the period when the Cold War was spooling up, budgets were free-flowing, and captured German aeronautical research data was changing the way that military and industry were looking at aviation challenges. The first bit of footage covers the McDonald XF-88. This was a twin-engine jet interceptor designed as a bomber escort. Only two of these were built before the project was canceled, but the design was resurrected years later as the F-101 Voodoo Fighter. That went on to serve for many years in both Air Force service and also in the Royal Canadian Air Force. Canadian versions of this plane served as late as 1984 before they were withdrawn from service. Next up is the Northrop XF-89, which served as the prototype for the F-89 Scorpion all-weather interceptor. This aircraft was designed to replace the P-61 Black Widow in the night fighter role and would have been called upon to intercept approaching Soviet bombers had it ever seen combat in that role. It's notable for being the first combat aircraft to be equipped with air-to-air -air nuclear weapons, in this case the Genie missile. Over a thousand Scorpions were built before the type was retired in 1969. The Lockheed XF-90 was one of those delightfully beautiful designs that looks a lot like the fictional generic jet fighters I used to scribble in the back of my notebooks as a kid. As a matter of fact, the aircraft appeared in the Blackhawks comic book series that was published by DC Comics during the 50s. As a matter of fact, I think the Blackhawks are still published. Only two of these were built before the Air Force canceled the project. One of these aircraft survived and is currently in storage, awaiting restoration at the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force. If the XF-90 was beautiful, then the XF-91 Thunderceptor resides at the far ugly end of that spectrum. Built by Republic Aircraft as a variant of their earlier F-84 Thunderjet, this interceptor aircraft had a combination of jet and rocket power. Jet power would have been used to take off and travel to the target area 
after which small rocket motors would have kicked in while the aircraft engaged the enemy. The unusual wing plan had a wider cord at the tip than it did at the root in order to improve stall performance. Mercifully, only two of these were built before the Air Force canceled the program, and one of these can unfortunately be seen today at the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force in Dayton, Ohio. We mentioned earlier the impact of German aeronautical research on post-war aircraft design, and the Convair XF-92A is perhaps one of the best examples of that. The XF-92A was essentially a powered, high-speed version of the DM-1 Delta Wing research glider that had been designed by German aeronautical designer Alexander Lippisch, who had also worked on the ME-163 Comet rocket fighter. Only a single XF-92A was built, but it had a significant impact on the design of other Delta Wing aircraft, including the F-102 and F-106 fighters, the B-58 bomber, and even the Concorde supersonic jetliner. Lippisch and the ME-163 also had a significant influence on the design of the Northrop X-4 research aircraft. Called the Bantam, this plane first flew in 1948 to investigate the potential of swept wing tailless designs. The X-4 was apparently a handful to fly and would pitch down abruptly in certain conditions. To correct that problem, researchers would attach and shape strips of balsa wood to modify the airfoil of the plane. Two X-4s were built, one of which is in storage at Edwards Air Force Base, and the other is on display at the National Museum of the U.S. Air Force. 